Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sabbath, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday, August 2nd, 2019. Let's take a look quickly at what's happening in the tropics. This will be pretty quick today. I've got to pack up from the hotel here in Pratt, Kansas, and I'll show you why I'm here in Pratt in just a moment. Um, so we got to do this pretty quickly today, plus, despite the fact that there are a few systems here on the map, there's not a lot to talk about, especially concerning the Atlantic Basin, but there are a few systems out there. We, of course, have Eric and Flossie and a new area of interest that probably won't do too much in the Southeast Pacific here. Here's Invest 96L and a couple of tropical systems over here in the Western Pacific, neither of which poses a significant problem. This one's got some heavy rainfall for parts of Southeast Asia, but other than that, we don't have any severe intense tropical cyclones anywhere in the globe at the moment. That being said, there are some impacts here from Eric for parts of the Hawaiian Islands, aside from the obvious cloud cover that we're seeing there. Maybe a few additional rain showers, but boy, you can really see these upper level winds coming out of the southwest and tearing apart the deep convection associated with what was once a fairly strong Hurricane Eric. And over here we also have some shear and otherwise just not favorable conditions. Looks like some dry air trying to come in. Um, what a strange setup overall with these two systems. Luckily for Hawaii, maybe some fresh water from the rainfall. That's always a good thing if it's not too much and in too short a period of time. Uh, it is very difficult to have tropical cyclones directly impact Hawaii with much intensity in terms of wind. But as I mentioned recently, the rainfall and the high surf, etc., are things to keep in mind. And those will be impacts from Eric and Flossie as they both pass by. In the Atlantic Basin, we see on the satellite imagery here these loops, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. Um, you know, there's definitely convection in the Atlantic. We have some here in the Southwest Atlantic and in the Western Atlantic associated with the leftovers of what was 95L. There's a little bit of a surface trough down here just north of the Keys, but generally speaking, upper level winds just not favorable overall. Uh, nice mesoscale, kind of a small mesoscale convective complex in the plains. I'm right over here in Pratt, Kansas, for what it's worth. And uh, we didn't see any storminess uh, during our weather balloon launch. That's why I'm here. I'll show you a picture of the balloon in just a moment. We saw the storms off in the distance, but we were a little too far to the west, um, and uh, which is, I guess, a good thing because they've had some flooding over in eastern Kansas. Um, back to the tropics, though, down here. But this is related, by the way. We're doing this weather balloon testing in Kansas and Oklahoma because it's fairly easy to do. That's why we do it in the Great Plains, because the idea is to launch one of these in the eye of a hurricane and collect data from the surface of the Earth to the stratosphere and back and also have the GoPro cameras on there to capture some remarkable video. That's why we do this in Kansas and Oklahoma, because we know during an, a hurricane experience is going to be rather difficult. It's also rather difficult to get anything to pop in the tropics right now. There's some limited disorganized convection associated with 96L. Boy, the system to its east really fizzled out in terms of convection. There is still energy there in the form of the low-level vorticity or the spin, potential energy, etc., but the dry air and the sinking pattern continues. And I want to just mention, again, it's early August, all right? Even blockbuster seasons like 2010, 2004, took until after the mid part of August, and in some cases, the latter part of August before they really took off. A lot of 2002 was September-based activity. It ramps up in August, but it's not until right at the very end of the month, that last 10 days, and then all of September is typically very busy climatologically speaking, and I'm seeing some signs. Um, my uh, 
internet friend. I've never met him in person, but Ben Knoll from Auckland, New Zealand, sent me a picture last night, a graphic on Twitter that suggests as we get into mid-September, a more favorable rising motion will set up shop across a good deal of the Atlantic Basin, releasing some of this sinking that's been going on. Uh, and maybe it'll happen before then. It's hard to say. So looking at the upper-level winds here, I know this is like, whoa, what are we looking at? Uh, let me outline the land masses here in blue. So here's the east coast of North America. Go down. That's bad for Florida. I'm trying to draw on this very smooth desk at the Hampton Inn here in Pratt, Kansas. So there's uh, North and South America. You see the uh, Lesser Antilles through here. There's Puerto Rico, just to get your bearings. So now let's switch this over to purple, or come on, violet. And so look at this. You see this kind of outline in here, this tropical upper tropospheric trough carved out. Just a very fancy way, a meteorological term for air that is converging um, in the upper levels. It's not divergent aloft, among other things. Um, and it creates this sort of background of this shear that comes across, and that's cutting into the deep tropics. And so the shear is very destructive here in the eastern Caribbean, and then it dips down 40 knots or so into the main development region with only areas in the eastern Atlantic and at the extreme southern part of the main development region experiencing shear values that are, and what is shear? That's a change in wind direction and speed with height, generally speaking. In, in tornado development, that's important to get tornadoes. That's a positive factor. In tropical cyclone development, you need to be able to have the thunderstorms, oh man, I'm at, come on. You need to be able to have the thunderstorms grow uh, into the atmosphere, you know, like that and not be blown in one direction, you know, where the, where the thunderstorm cluster is moving this way and the air is moving the other way, it shears it apart. You need everything to move in generally the same direction so that the thunderstorms can go up, spread out, do their thing, and make more thunderstorms. It's an engine, so to speak. And when you see all that red down there, uh, this is very indicative of a negative pattern and so not much is going to happen, it appears, with these tropical waves in terms of development into a cyclone. But as we see, you know, there is some with this little surge here, this moisture surge now coming into the Northeast Caribbean. Eventually the moisture from 96L will as well. And so there will be an increase in rain and gusty winds from time to time. So you know, it's not like there's no impact. But in terms of this becoming a hurricane, like some of the models were showing, that doesn't look nearly as likely. But it is interesting just to note, you know, we do have these tropical waves here. They are robust. And they're in 95L and its energy over here somewhere, the leftovers of it. And it's only August 2nd, right? Let me just show you this real quick. Um, I'm going to draw your attention. August 1st, 2017, Phil Klotzbach, Dr. Klotzbach, Emily is post-tropical, the first five, so we were A, B, C, D, E, five through August 1st, 2017, and, and I know that each year is different, but I'm reminding you people, okay, because I don't want people to be like, well, the season's not going to do anything. Well, it could just be one hurricane somewhere that's very unpleasant. I don't know, but we just... Got to remember history, people, okay? So we had five up to this point exactly two years ago. And they combined those five for the least accumulated cyclone energy for any uh, Atlantic season of record breaking 1988, 1988. So you understand that? We had five already. So you said, well, 2017, man, we already had five of them. But those five... That's like the starting five of a basketball team go out in the first half and they score 12 points. You know, some NBA team or college team or whatever. 
It's just an index. It's the amount of points that the wind energy from a system generates, okay? That's what ACE is, accumulated cyclone energy. And the first five there of 2017 was terrible uh, in terms of uh, the quality of the systems. Do you remember the rest of 2017? I do, and that's all that needs to be said. Interesting that 1988 until that time was the old record. Do you remember 1988? If you live in Jamaica and parts of Cancun and the, you know, the Yucatan and areas just south of Brownsville, you do. Gilbert, the one big one for 1988 as an example. So we got a long way to go. And maybe we have a busy early to mid-September through early to mid-October. And that one month time period out of 12 months out of the year could be extremely busy. You just never know. All right, so just keep it in perspective. That's all I'm saying. We want there to be no negative impacts on people, places, and things. But if there are, I don't want you to say, well, I didn't know, man. I thought it was August was quiet, that everything else would be. No, sir. So this is from Derek. Our good buddy Derek Thompson took this remarkable picture. What a great picture uh, of Brent and myself. He says, another day, another launch, this time in Kansas. Of course, we were in Pratt. First of August yesterday, we launched, uh, he did a radio sound to get an idea of the upper level winds. And that was a like 25 gram or 25 cubic feet of helium. Uh, and then we filled this weather balloon, which was uh, probably 150 cubic feet of helium. And it made it to a little over 101,000 feet. There is yours truly. Uh, holding the balloon, hey, I've lost so much weight that the five pounds of uh, lift that this was producing would have put me close to 175 pounds. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's Brent watching everything. Uh, he had his quadcopter up filming it. We will do some kind of a documentary this year. Uh, I'm getting way ahead of myself. But the bottom line is we will feature a lot of this video and this background stuff. If we ever get to do this in the eye of a hurricane, of course, it'll be extremely relevant. But um, there you go. So uh, let me just try one thing here before I go. I said I was going to keep it short. I'm going to try. Bear with me. I want to try to show you something on YouTube real quick off of my channel. All righty. Do, do, do. I posted a video today. Oh, it's unlisted. That's right. That's okay. I'll unlist it later, and we can take a look at it. It was of the recovery of the balloon, and our patrons have seen it. Uh, one of the benefits of being a patron on Patreon, everything we do, you all get to see it first. And in a little while, I'll put it public so everybody can see it. We found the balloon in this incredibly thick field, in rural Kansas, and I mean, it was big time rural. And Brent and I took a little over two hours, I think, to go get it. Oh, man, it was remarkable. Great teamwork, great data, great testing. We still have a little bit of work to do with the GoPros. Those were um, seemingly freezing up, and I'm going to get long-winded here if I don't shut up soon. But uh, overall, I give us an A to A, uh, A minus on... Everything in terms of the data, the tracking was perfect. The height was perfect, 100% there. We got above 100,000 feet on both launches. But those GoPros were having some trouble with them. And in the past, we have not. Uh, in 2015 and 2016, when we did testing, that was perfect. So we got some more testing to do. And if August stays quiet, maybe we'll do some more testing. Hey, look, thanks for joining in and watching this video. I appreciate it from whatever device you happen to be tuning in from. It's great to have you there. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be with you uh, one more time tomorrow before I fly home. Thanks. Have a good rest of your Friday, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.